All right, friends. Monica said that we are still waiting. Can you guys see me? All right. Welcome everybody to the August Gnome of the Month. It appears as... Am I live? Can you guys, can you guys see me? Hang on one second, friends. I'm going to check on my other computer, see what I see. Oh, looks like I'm live. Okay. Sorry, I'm a one-man show, and sometimes uh, I can't always see each other. So let me say hello, because uh, it looks like I was still talking to myself. <laughs> I saw the red light, but it wasn't going live, apparently. So it was only recording. All right, friends, welcome to the August Gnome of the Month. We've got a lot of friends out there. Um, we have Cheryl and Diane and Vicki and Chris. Uh, say hi to each other, everyone. And so today we're working with Frank, the Gnome of the Month for August. If this is your first time and you don't know how to download the pattern, don't forget to go to www.jellyrollclub.com. If you have not watched any of the previous um, episodes of this series go back and watch because they build on each other but hello everybody uh, I clicked the record button instead of the live button on my computer so it took it had a small delay so thanks for your patience as I'm a one-man show so hello everybody we're getting ready to get started so we have Frank and we also have a little house plant I'm not using these boots in my particular block because I'm going to use those in a mini quilt and then I have a grassy patch I added, but you should have Frankie Frank. And as you can see, all of the drawings are reversed. So when you use fusible, they'll end up like this. All right, so let's get started and talk about the project for today. So one of the things that you guys can see is I've already started. Uh, Frank, I did him with fusible web and I pressed him down and so I'm working on some details. And so the focus of today's lesson is how to add little details to your applique, especially when you have little, little tiny pieces like you do in this plant. So if you notice, this plant has uh, a stem that's really thin and it has these little veins on all of the leaves. By the way, this is a fiddle leaf fig. I have one in my basement and I love it. And so today, I'm gonna start with probably one of the most basic stitches you can use, which is a satin stitch. Then I'm gonna be talking about a chain stitch because I'm gonna teach you today how to create the house plant using um, all of these little parts that I've already cut out and uh, how to create that entire little house plant. So welcome everybody. It took me a minute to get started, but uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's talk about applique. So the term applique is literally anchoring one piece of fabric to another fabric. And I've already started with Frankie. Frankie's a gardener. Uh, he loves to look at seed catalogs in the winter, but in the summertime, he's getting his hands dirty all the time. And so Frankie is going to look like a watermelon. So what I did is I took a metallic uh, pen and I drew where I want those watermelons to be. And I'm just gonna use some pearl cotton. And so I use this DMC pearl cotton and it comes like this in a little spool. And I like to use that to add details. This is also great if you don't wanna anchor your um, pieces by machine you can anchor them with a blanket stitch and I'm going to be talking about blanket stitches next month. But this month I'm going to show you a uh, satin stitch which is a very basic stitch and then I'm going to do a chain stitch. Some, some people call it um, the lazy daisy stitch. It has a lot of different names but that's what we're doing today. Uh, so we're going to start with Frank and these are the supplies that you need. Um, I keep my little handy dandy embroidery floss in a little box. And so today you're gonna need um, embroidery needles. I like to use size five. They have a nice um, eye to do two strand uh, embroidery. 
I keep uh, a lot of embroidery floss in my sewing room because I like to add details to my quilts. So I usually have it in a lot of different colors. I like variegated thread. It's a great way to add cute little details to your uh, applique pieces and it doesn't cost a lot of money because embroidery floss is really, really inexpensive. You can get it in a variety of colors and this is like my garden collection as you can see. I have like an olive and a bright green and a kelly green. So I, I like them in different colors. Um, and so today I'm going to use embroidery floss in four different shades of green. I'm using a little bit of Island Batiks because I love Batiks for raw edge applique because they don't fray like regular fabrics. And so they're great for this. And they also have all of these color variations, which makes it fun for creating plants. So Frank's already been stitched down. This is a little piece of Lori Holt fabric that I had that has a little tape measure. And so that became my little terracotta pot. And so the other thing that I'm going to need today is uh, an embroidery hoop. And so I'm going to be uh, hooping this block and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. But first let's talk about one important thing. One of the things that I see um, especially with newbies, is when they start to applique and their block gets kind of wrinkly from handling it, a lot of times people will press from the front. I typically do not press my pieces from the front. I use a wool mat because it, it has a little bit of give to it. And then I lay my applique down and I always press from the back. So whenever I'm working on it, a piece, I like to press a lot. And I use just a dry iron, no, uh, no steam, no starch, and I press from the back. And what that does is it creates a block that's extremely, extremely flat. And, that, and that's what I want because as I add these um, details, I don't want my block to pucker. And so I start with a nice, freshly pressed uh, block and I'm going to hoop it in my embroidery hoop. I usually use an 8 inch hoop because I think it gives you a lot of room and so I'm going to make sure that this goes where it needs to go. I've already stitched down all of Frank except for his shoes and I'm ready to start working on the stem for Frank. And so I'm going to just hoop him in here. Loosen up your hoop girls. So I'm just going to hoop my guy, not too tight, so you may want to loosen it quite a bit because you don't want to damage the applique that you've already done. So, yeah. There we go. And so now that I have him hooped, I want to make sure that he is tight, but not too tight, okay? Well, Vivian, welcome. If you've never made a quilt before, this is a great place to start. Okay, so I have my block, and he's hooped, and I've lightly traced, so I stuck my plant, put him on a light box, and I gently traced with just a regular mechanical pencil. I use a 0.5 and just very lightly I traced a little vine right here where I want the center stem to be for that tree. And I'm gonna curve it a little bit because the fiddle leaf that I have at my house curves at the top and he's gonna look just like the fiddle leaf that I have at my house. And so if you can see that, that's just lightly traced right there in pencil. And so I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to draw for you in extra large the stitch that we're about to do. And so this is a very basic um, applique stitch and it's called a chain stitch. And that's what I'm going to use to build his stem. So to build a chain stitch, I'm going to start, my needle is going to come up from the back in one spot right here, right? And then I'm going to build a chain and I'm gonna come back right beside there and I'm gonna leave a loop. 
Then I'm going to bring my needle under the fabric and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to create another loop. And this is why they call it a chain stitch. And you come like this and you're literally building. You go back, you tunnel back under, you come here and you go like this right beside there. And I'm going to do that over and over again. Okay? <laughs> We're going to do that over and over and over again. And so let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. For those of you who have never done this, I'm going to use two strands of DMC floss. a size five embroidery needle, and I'm just gonna create a little knot. And so I'm gonna pull that all the way to the end until it makes that little quilters knot. And I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna come in from the bottom, and I need my glasses, girls. I need my glasses. Come in from the bottom. And I'm going to pull this around. And I'm going to go right beside where I just came and I'm going to come up and create a little chain. And one little tip if you notice the nail polish is gone from my fingernail, is because one of the ways that I keep my stitches straight is by taking and drawing a little line on my finger and those lines help keep me my stitches straight so that when I pinch my fabric, do you see the little lines I put? They're a quarter inch apart and so when I'm pinching that and I'm holding that against that piece of fabric. I'm using those little quarter inch tick marks against my fingernail as a measuring guide. And so that's why my fingernails end up looking kind of rough and I don't use acrylic nails, I just paint them myself because I do that. And so that gives me a gauge for those nice exact stitches. Okay, so I made that big loop. I'm gonna loop that under my needle and I'm gonna pull out And you want to avoid tangling that so you can use a little bit of thread conditioner. But I just loop it like this and I try to make sure that my thread doesn't get all tangled when I do it. I go back into the center of that and I come back out like this. Like I said, you can use your thumb. You have those little measurements to get those nice, perfect little quarter inch stitches. I don't like to tangle myself up and so I pull it. And so what I'm building is, looks like a little tiny chain, right? So I'm pulling this again through the middle. I use my finger beside there. And what I'm doing is I'm building a very, very small chain that's going to be the, the main stem to my plant. And so anytime that you have uh, an applique that has little tiny vines and legs and beaks, this is a great way to do it. So you just take it and it's, it's really quick once you get in the habit of doing it. I wrap it around and I pull. And you can get really, really fast at this. Handwork is not one of my favorite things. I love to do stuff by machine, but handwork adds a lot of dimension to your quilt block. Now, why am I doing this using the chain, the chain stitch? Because there's a lot of embroidery stitches I could use. The reason I do that is because the chain stitch lays very, very flat. And so if I'm quilting this on a, uh, long arm machine or if I'm quilting it on my sewing machine, it's going to have the least amount of bulk so that when I'm quilting, 
I'm not uh, causing needles to break on my sewing machine. And so that's why I pick this as my stitch choice, if you notice. That makes a very, can you guys see that? It's a little bit blurry. I'm gonna give it a chance to, to uh, focus. But that's what I'm building. I'm just building that little stem right in the middle. Can you guys see what I'm doing? And yes. And so that's why I picked this particular stitch because it's nice and flat. Once you press it down, it creates very little bulk. All right, and do not tangle yourself like I just did. Uh, okay, there we go. I can always stick my needle in you saw that and that allows that to flatten out. And so just keep it consistent. I swing my thread to the right. Bring that in. I use the lip, the little markings on my thumbnail right there as a guide. And I just try to keep it as straight as I can so it doesn't tangle like this. And if your thread tangles a lot like mine is doing, then you can always try a little bit of thread conditioner, but just be gentle with it. Use the needle to coax it into place. And if it keeps doing that, you can always use a little bit of thread conditioner on your piece. And that just keeps it flat. There we go. And so a little bit of thread magic will stop it from tangling. You can also use a little bit of beeswax um, anything to keep your thread from being a big tangly mess. Okay? And so little Frank is going to get his vines just like that. And like I said, I always use my finger as like a visual reference and that enables me to keep my stitches small and consistent because sewing by hand is probably one of my least favorite tasks in the sewing room. However, it produces such a nice result that I don't have a choice, right? I have to do it. And so I keep doing the same thing over and over again, about a quarter of an inch each little stitch. And this is a great, great method for adding all kinds of details. To your applique pieces. And so this is how I'm going to build that little skinny trunk. All right. All right. So once I've started and I've added that that amount to my trunk, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to flatten it a little bit because I may want to add the first leaf. So let me pull this up, right? And so again, I press in between the steps. If you've seen some of my other ones, you know that I press. So I'll flip this over with a hot iron. I'm just gonna give it a quick press because I like for it to be flat. And you can see the little stem just creates a single line in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to anchor a leaf. So I've got a bunch of leaves here because I wanted it to look like a fiddle leaf. Some of these leaves are bigger and some are smaller. But this one looks pretty cute. And maybe I want a leaf that looks like this. Keeping in mind that this is in my seam allowance. So I may go ahead and just trim that smaller before I attach that leaf. So if you want your leaves to be smaller, longer, and so that's my first leaf. I'm gonna pull this off and I'm gonna anchor it right where I had that. I'm gonna give it a press. And I'm ready to move down the center to create my veins. And so I can come here now, and I'm going to go under the leaf.
and I'm going to create another little daisy chain, a little chain stitch right there. Can you guys see my hands? At the tip of that leaf, and I'm going to create a stem. So in order to create a stem, I made a single stitch that's about a quarter of an inch. And I, again, I use my fingernail as my gauge. Then I'm gonna come halfway down that vine and I'm gonna come straight out. And so you're doing like a stitch forward and a half of a stitch back. Let me show you what that looks like. So on a piece of paper, I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch this way, right? Then I'm going to bring my needle and I'm going to back stitch about halfway. Then I'm going to do another stitch and then I'm going to back stitch about halfway. And then do another stitch and I'm going to back stitch about halfway. And so I'm coming out and then coming back, coming out and coming back. And so it's kind of like a loop, but it creates a stem. And so what I'm taking is I'm taking this and I'm not hooping it because it's easier for me to manipulate it without the hoop at this point. And I'm coming out, I don't know if you can see it, and I'm stitching up this way and then coming back down. And I'm creating that little stem in the center. If I wanted to create a chain, I could continue the chain right here. And so the chain could add dimension, or I could just do a straight little stitch. And so I do a chain, a couple of straight, a chain, a couple of straight. And so what I'm doing is I'm just making the details inside that little center of the leaf. And I'm going to anchor it all the way. It doesn't take long. Does anybody have any questions so far? Like I said, this is a great easy way to add dimension. It doesn't take long if you've noticed. I've been working for maybe 10 minutes on this and already I've almost got to the end of this leaf and I've got a little bit of a vine. So it doesn't take long once you practice. Does anybody have any questions about this particular technique? All right, friends, sometimes I just stop and recondition my thread because it keeps it from getting tangly. Because what I want is my thread to be smooth, All right? And I'm using two strands of DMC floss. All right. Same thing. If it starts to get frayed on the end, you may just want to give it a little trim. flatten it. It makes it easier to thread if you take and you flatten the, the two strands together with your finger. You get really, really flat. And then push it through the hole. You can lick it like I do mm. through your teeth. Why not? All right. And so now I'm going back through here. And I'm just going through and creating that stem in the center. And I like how it looks because it just creates really nice detail. And so I'm making, I'm making it and then I'm ending it and then I'm coming through and doing another little chain. And I'm coming through. Okay. So that's your basic chain stitch, and that's how you can create an entire plant. Um, you use about 18 inches of thread, and that can get you from here to the top of the leaf, make the vines, then you get another 18 inches, and you start right here, and then just keep going up across to each of those spots. And like I said, I've cut uh, 
for this particular thing, I've cut a lot of batik because it won't fray on me. And then I can come back once I'm done and I can do blanket stitch either by hand or by machine on this little leaf. And so I will stop and do that. So I will continue up this arm and I will add to this plant. I may add something up here at the top. And so this will become my little fiddly fig. I can take these, make them bigger, make them smaller. And flip that around. And just play with the, what you have and decide how you want to make your little plant. You can overlap some of these leaves if you want to. And that's how I'm going to build the little plant that's going to go with my gnome. If I don't want to block his face, I can always trim that. I want to make it smaller. But you play with your plant and you decide uh, how to build the plant. Like I said, if you want to uh, point the leaves, I think it looks better with this particular technique. So you take the shapes of the leaves and you simply just trim to where they have a look, a little bit of a point to them like this. And when you make that little point, then it looks a lot more natural when you attach that particular leaf to the main stem, okay? Does anybody have any questions? It says, could you suggest a needle threader? Yes, I have a needle threader that I use. It's like a three part needle threader and uh, he works great. You just stick him in the, stick him in the eye. Um, if you use embroidery needles, they're, they have great big eyes. So you just squeeze that together and shove them through the hole. Oh, this is not an embroidery needle. But you can just take and shove that through the hole right here and he works great. Then once you get him in, you stick your thread in there pull it through, super easy to use. It's like a three-point threader. So if you guys uh, need that, go ahead, by all means. I use a threader, sometimes I don't. Um, but I definitely try to keep uh, using a system. Whatever system works for you is fine, but like I said, I like drawing quarter-inch lines on my thumb like this with a Sharpie. Um, it stays on there so it doesn't rub off. I'm not marking my top and so I'm not taking the time to have to remove those marks. And so especially when I'm hand quilting, I also do the same thing. I take my stitches and I use my thumb as a guide and that's why the polish wears off the end of my thumb. All right, and so that is how I'm building the plant on uh, this little guy that we have here. The other thing that I could do if I didn't want to build them out of batik is I could use felt to build the plant. And so if I wanted to do something that doesn't fray, I could use uh, wool felt and I could cut my pieces out of him and it sews like butter. So if you have never appliqued with felt, it is very easy to needle. And I love using felt on pieces that are going to be like wall hangings because this would make a great, great uh, dimensional applique. So if you wanted to make a beard out of felt for a wall hanging, that would be great. You could still wash him, just don't throw him in the dryer. And you could make your plant pieces out of felt. And this is a great option if you are applique. All right, friends, does anybody have any questions about Frankie? Does anybody have any questions about Frankie? All right, so Tips, remember, press from the back, press frequently. Uh, use a hoop if you're doing a, a big, long row of stitches, but you don't necessarily have to use a hoop. I do. Have a system for uh, measuring your stitches so that they end up nice and even. You know, even if you're new, you can make nice, even stitches, and even if your stitches are not perfect, if they're even, uh, then that actually just makes it look that much more professional. Um, I stitched everything down and then I used textile paint on his beard because this little guy is gonna be a wall hanging in my classroom. As you guys know, I'm a full-time school teacher. 
and school starts uh, very soon for me. I'm back full time in just a, a few more days. And so Frankie is going to go on the door of my classroom. All right, so that's the plant. I'm going to leave this over here and I'm going to show you a little bit of a satin stitch to show you how I'm going to put the watermelon seeds on my guy. So for this, I'm going to use pearl cotton. Let me pull that out. And pearl cotton is just a single strand of thread. It doesn't have a bunch of uh, strands. I mean, I could try to break that down, but it would fray. But I like pearl cotton because it's great for embroidery. And so let me get a needle with a bigger eye. And so I just use embroidery. It says embroidery cruel. These are sizes. Um, three through nine, and so some of these have a great big giant eye on them. And so if I'm gonna use pearl cotton, I always get one with a great big eye on it. I don't know if you can see that. For those of you who've been asking, I will be doing a uh, video tutorial on how to make your own sunflower pin cushion. I know people have been asking Oh, how did I get the beard so shaded? Um, I used textile, uh, textile paint. And so it's for uh, making t-shirts. And you can buy it at craft stores for just a couple of dollars. And I diluted it with water. And I shaded his beard to give him that, that dimension. All right, so I've got a little bit of uh, pearl cotton. And you just, pearl cotton is nice and thick, so you stick that in there. Poke it through the hole. And get that threaded. Definitely use a threader for that. And then you cut about 18 inches. I just go diagonal. This is a 12 inch block, and so I just come kind of measure diagonal. And pearl cotton is also very soft, so it won't create a big lump when I use that. Same thing, I'm gonna run it through my thread conditioner. And I do the same thing with my pearl cotton. I just condition him. And I'm gonna do what's called a satin stitch. So a satin stitch, if you've never satin stitched before, so there's the watermelon seed right here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fill, that marker's not working, so here we go. I'm gonna fill the entire watermelon shape that's like this, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go from side to side to side to side. So I'm gonna take the needle out and put it here, take the needle out and put it here. And I'm going to keep going, overlapping just a little bit until I fill the entire shape with my pearl cotton, okay? So let me put my glasses on, because the older we get, the less we see. All right, so to make my Filter's knot, I just grab and twist a few times, hold it with my thumb, and it makes a nice neat knot at the bottom, most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't, but it makes a nice neat knot. And I'm coming here into the tip. And I'm gonna pull it through, and I am gonna hoop this, because for satin stitching, it's better to hoop. And so I'm gonna put this guy and you can hoop forwards or you can hoop backwards. That means you can stick it in like this or you can do it the other way. So you can hoop however it works for you. I'm gonna slide this down. Because I want a little bit of tension. I want it to uh, just have like a little bounce to it. And the reason I want that is so that I can get a nice smooth satin stitch. Pull that in into satin stitch. I'm literally just going to go across and down with that pearl cotton. I'm coming to the other side. The 
and I'm literally just going from side to side. And I'm coming down right beside where the other one is. And then I'm going to come back and backfill. So I'm literally just going right beside the other stitch that I did before. See it? Right beside there. And I'm coming down. And I'm going beside it. And I'm just going to keep going. And that's why I've drawn all of those watermelon seeds on there. So that I can come back and just keep giving that little watermelon seed some shape. You want to keep your stitches, again, consistent. And you're just coming across like this. And you come over uh, just a sixteenth of an inch, and then you put that pearl cotton right beside where you were before. Pearl cotton is great if you're going to tie your quilt top. So back in the day, uh, and even some people still do it now, instead of quilting the entire quilt top, they often will draw a grid on their quilt top and tie it and do tied instead of um, densely quilted. Um, and that's, some people call them tacked or tied. And I like using pearl cotton for that. It makes a really nice um, knot for doing that particular uh, method. Okay, so I'm coming across here and I'm rounding the corner. If you notice, this is really fast. Practice makes perfect. And so I've just had to force myself to do a little bit of handwork. I'm not a fan of handwork. But the more you do it, the more you get used to it. And like I said, you need some tools. I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands, so I've kind of tended to stay away from it a little bit. And then I come back in here. I've, I've stayed away from it a little bit, but not as much. And then I'm going to fill in anything that's uh, irregular on the borders, like this. And then I'm going to come up here to this spot. And I'm going to make that watermelon seed a little bit pointy, so I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to take another little tiny bit on this side, coming right adjacent to that, and coming back to the center. And now I can tie that off, and I have another little watermelon seed. And I'm going to do some of these in white and some of these in black, just like in the little picture. But that, my friends, is how you add detail. If you don't have watermelon fabric, you can make your own. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tunnel underneath that. I'm going to give it a little tug. I'm not going to make another knot. I'm just going to tunnel underneath. And that's how I'm putting the seeds on my little gnome. Okay, friends, that was just a very basic introduction to using embroidery stitches to uh, embellish your block. Again, whenever I stop, I press from the back and it keeps my block from looking like a puckered, wrinkly mess. If you've noticed, my block stays very flat and it doesn't pucker because I pre-washed this backing fabric. So everything that I'm using as a backing fabric, I've pressed and washed and lightly starched. And so it makes for very, very flat, very, very precise um, foot blocks. All right, friends, that's all for today. I just wanted to show you um, some basic techniques that help you add details to your blocks. This is how um, I get all the small details that I want. I could come back in and if I wanted to, I could add two more chain stitches beside here if I wanted to make that stem thicker, or I could stat satin stitch over it if I wanted to have a raised stem. I could do it in a different color and come through the chain and, and stitch all the way down. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. Um, next year, um, I have pledged to spend more time doing handwork, so I'm going to be doing an entire
quilt series that you may want to join me on. And if you love all things green, you're going to want to join me for another series. Okay? All right, friends, it is 2.43. If you have any questions, it says, is there any time that you should use interfacing to strengthen the fabric when embroidering? Yes. I typically use interfacing if I am doing embroidery by machine because the speed at which the machine uh, pulls fabric over, it tends to pucker the fabric. Um, I don't do it if I'm doing this by hand. So if you notice all of these blanket stitch that I put on there, I did that by hand. And so the same with some of this. I did some, uh, I did some by machine and then I decided that I wanted to do it by hand to practice. And so if you're doing machine by, if you're doing embroidery by hand, you don't necessarily need interfacing, but if you're doing it by machine, and you're doing a lot of heavy embroidery, I recommend using um, stabilizer. All right, friends, that's all for now. I will see you guys next Friday. We are finishing up our Sunbonnet Sue that's behind me. Um, if you have uh, missed a couple of months, go ahead and get caught up. We've got some fun stuff. Next month, I'm showing you how to do a felty. So I'm gonna do an entire gnome that's all felted. And so you guys are gonna see how to do that. I'm going to use um, a felting technique to add a fuzzy beard, so you're going to love that. Um, but there's only four more gnome lessons, and so once we're done, we're going to move on to other projects, but don't worry, we got a lot of stuff coming down the pike. Don't forget to leave me your suggestions if you have suggestions. Thank you for tuning in, and so have a safe uh, day. I hope that you guys are doing okay. Lots of prayers for our friend from Uvalde, Texas. And everybody else, get working on your gnomes or your soup because that's what I'm doing all afternoon. All right, girls and guys, happy sewing. Have a great day. Don't forget, we're going to be making one of these very, very soon. Bye, friends.